For some people, the thrill of a sport involves pushing yourself to the limit. On February 13th, 1994, a group of friends with a wide range of mountain biking experience were spending their Sunday afternoon riding together in a rugged and remote area near Blackwell, Texas. The ranch is 4,600 acres of rolling terrain, buttes, washes. Every time it rains, it changes. Sometimes it's hard packed, a lot of times it's washed and rolling rocks, which makes it very difficult. It's basically a balancing act on the, on the terrain, and you uh, kind of have to let your bike float underneath you. You really have to keep aware and look out in front of you to know what's coming up. Don Eichels rode in the center of the pack. The four experienced mountain bikers, other than myself, rode ahead of us, and I more or less wanted to hang back with the three less experienced guys, because if you're going into an isolated area and one that's very technical, you don't want to be riding by yourself. Nancy Harvey was concerned that her husband, Stan Kent, had gone on this ride. The group Stan was biking with were people who had been doing this type of biking for years, and he had done it for two months. He was taking risks that would be dangerous to someone who really hasn't been doing it for a long time. Stan's friend, Richard Brown, was also a less experienced mountain biker. Stan was in front of me that day, so I stayed back. I know my limitations. At times, I have a tendency to, to fall and I wouldn't want to fall in front of someone and cause him to fall. Think up! Gary Fraser was one of the most experienced riders in the group. The top is rocky and rough, and it kind of levels out and fools you because you pick up a little bit of speed and then it drops off. Towards the bottom of it, it gets more washed out. So if you've gone with too much speed into the bottom of the hill, you have a lot of difficulty slowing down for the turn. Think you can make it? Yeah. Okay. Just be careful. It was a, a real uneasy feeling for me because Stan and I were pretty close friends and uh, we kind of watch out for each other when we're biking. And we kept talking to Stan and asking if he was okay and he kept coming back to us saying that no, I'm not okay, I'm in a lot of pain. Are your legs okay? You, you we realized that we need to get more help in there than what we had. You two guys go on out and get some help. You guys stay together, though, okay? I'm a uh, scoutmaster for the Boy Scout Troop, and that's basically where a lot of my first aid experience and uh, training comes from. When a, there's a serious injury, you don't wait for the symptoms of shock. Uh, you automatically go ahead and treat for shock. Stan, we want you to keep your body as still as possible. Just let them move you, okay? If he had sustained a back or neck injury, the only thing you can do is make it worse if you, you know, jarred him or made any sudden movements with him. Let's try to brace his neck a little bit. Let's That's a good idea. Let's our camel backs. We were gonna make it impossible for him to purposely move his head. And what we decided to do is to cushion the sides of his head 
and then push boulders so that it would at least stabilize until we got uh, experienced rescue personnel there. Within 10 minutes, the two mountain bikers got back to the head of the trail, where they happened to find an off-duty EMT. Uh, we got a guy that's hurt real bad back in there on Telegraph Hill. I lost him. I came down that hill too fast. While the other four bicyclists searched for a road that could be used to Stan, bring in a rescue vehicle, Gary stayed with Stan. I never met this guy before, and I was making conversation, just trying to keep his mind off of where he was at. Uh, Originally, I'm from New York. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What brings you to Once in a while, he would wince, and he'd complain oh, about a sharp man. pain. And I felt uh, helpless, I, that I couldn't do any more for him. When EMT Junior Kennick got to the scene, he quickly assessed Stan's condition. He told me that his neck hurt and his back hurt, and uh, I realized there was a real good chance that he had spinal injury. He was in severe danger because if he sneezed or anything, he could have paralyzed himself. Gary and Junior returned to the trailhead in search of first aid equipment. We were trying to f find something we could use for a backbone. Yeah, that'll work. This is a good old work. It was ideal, so we got some screwdrivers and pretty much yanked it out of the wall. One, two, two three. Uh, yeah. easy. They all seem to be knowledgeable in some first aid. So I figured they would be able to do as I asked because it might be at least an hour before we had an ambulance on the scene. All right. I was just encouraging him, but I knew that he was worried about his wife, Nancy, and he was worried about what was going to happen to his life because of an accident like this you know, can change a person's life forever. That's a slow guy. Slow and level. The sooner that he can get treatment in the hospital, the better off he'll be. Stand the big boy. <laughs> when the Blackwell Volunteer Rescue Unit, including EMT Marsha Harris, reached the ranch, they had to drive the ambulance cross country to get near the scene. We had to leave the road and just go out into pasture. We drug bought them going through and didn't know if we'd be able to get out of there or not. Once we get more people in the back of that ambulance, Careful with rocks, slippery. I looked right. up and couldn't believe that the uh, the ambulance was pulling in there. I don't know how they ever got that thing back in there, but right everything now. was working out to Stan's favor. All right. Put him down right over here, guys. Right. Fire Chief Will Lenore took charge of Stan's care. I knew that someone in this group had some medical training by looking at the way they had him packaged. I had a. Uh, a lot of admiration for what these guys had done. He had the tingling sensation in the fingers and four fingers on the other hand that were hurting him very bad. But observing the fingers, there was no injury. Signs that he very well did have serious injuries to the neck. I'll get this back. We've got a patient that is feeling in all four extremities. He's moving all four extremities. But one wrong move, and you've got a patient with a lifetime of immobility or immortality. 44-year-old Stan Kent was taken to the emergency department of Shannon Medical Center and put under the care of neurosurgeon Robert Legrand, Jr. Another good hard squeeze here on the right side. Let's see the next one. And the next one. There are seven vertebrae in the neck, and the first two were fractured, and there was a slight dislocation of the second one. No question about it. And there's that. An injury to that location can cause death because it can cut off breathing, it can cut off the heartbeat, and it can cause total paralysis. Fracture going all the way through the pedicles in the body. Stan could have died if he had not been treated appropriately at the scene of the accident. A friend drove Nancy to the hospital to be with her husband as soon as she was notified of the accident. I didn't know if I'd find him all torn up or what it was that was wrong, but I figured right. knowing right. Stan, it was probably something fairly serious. Stan? Yeah. I'm here. How are you? Did they tell you what, did they tell you what I did? No, other than fell off your bike. Oh, I broke my neck. 
he was in the best hands he could be in. Uh, he was able to move his fingers and his toes, and so I knew there was really no major neurological damage to him. And then I was also a little bit uh, angry with him because I'd been warning him frequently about how dangerous it was and to be careful. I really messed up this time. Yeah. I'll work with it. His bike helmet sustained considerable damage and it was quite obvious to me that it prevented a more serious head injury and I think it prevented a more serious spinal and spinal cord injury. This thing just going to take some good use to it. I can see that. The halo was uh, an adjustment. Okay. I had to learn to walk again. You feel top heavy. Uh, you're afraid to stand up. You're afraid to walk around. And it was hard to learn that I will not be able to run or bike for uh, six months to a year from the time the accident happened. In the five months since the incident, Stan has been slowly healing. He doesn't take any risks now because he realizes how serious it is. How did he get these spots on his neck? He's playing with the boys out in the pasture, playing rough. I had never been down that trail before, and I didn't know what to expect. I should have stopped and got off and walked down the hill. I needed to ease into mountain biking, and I went a little too fast. Up straight. Back. What saved him was having the right people there who knew what to do and the right circumstances. A friend of mine said he is the most unlucky, lucky person she's ever met. He looks good. Everybody that was there on that day was a hero. It probably didn't look real serious, but everybody assumed it was, and that saved my life. I lived through this accident. Years ago, I had a type of pneumonia that's been nicknamed Legionnaire's disease, and I lived through that. So I feel lucky and I feel fortunate. If cats have nine lives, I've already used up two of mine. <laughs> Next, she was coming around and things seemed to be going good.